Hey everybody, Aaron with Otter Creek Farm and BushhoggingServices.com. Today uh, we're going to be doing a little project that uh, came to mind when I was looking at getting a scoop out uh, or clean out bucket that has the smooth edge for the excavator and it was like 4500 bucks you know, to, to get a bucket that just had that straight edge. So I started to think about, well, what can I do to get around that? And uh, what I came up with is to actually mount a plate on either side of the teeth and then use some really heavy bolts to sandwich the teeth in the middle and see if I can't create some kind of smooth edge myself. So that is today's project. Uh, I went by and picked up some steel. Let me show you that. So I got some heavy duty. This is an eight inch piece, half inch, and that is a four inch piece or four inches wide, a half inch as well, thereabouts. And so I'm going to cut those down to size and I'll show you on, on this here. So I'm going to have a piece that goes across the top here and then another piece that comes on the bottom here. And I'm going to put bolts in between those with lock washers and squeeze it really tight and see if it holds. Um, who knows? But if you're looking for metal, in Tampa we have in Tampa we have the metal warehouse and they have a section where they keep what are called drops and drops are just pieces they chop off the end of a another cut that they do that's basically scrap metal for them and uh, if you go to try to first of all you couldn't find that in a, a home box store but if you thought you could you'd pay 150 bucks for it I got those two big pieces of steel for 50 so I thought that was a pretty good deal now the project today is to size them up and cut them. Uh, really, it should only be two cuts, which is cutting the length of each because I was fortunate the top piece I needed four inches, the bottom piece I needed eight inches. They had both of them. So I got to do two cuts with the metal saw and then uh, I'm going to use the magnetic drill to bore some holes, which is really cool. I'm glad to, uh, I get to use that a little bit more often and then sandwich together. So this isn't a big project, but uh, hopefully it'll work out because if it does, then you know, saving 4500 bucks on getting another bucket because I just don't need it all the time. You know, uh, when I know I have that type of project, sandwich them together, crank on them, and I'm done. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So I've decided that I'm actually going to uh, tack this plate to the bucket and then put the top plate on, tack it in place, and then try to drill it from here. The reason being is this angle here, if I drill the plates when they're flat against one another, that angle is gonna open up and then the bolt's gonna to wanna to go diagonal and this is uh, the hole will actually be straight down. So I need to drill it in place so I'm getting that angle down through both plates uh, to make it work better. This is just an idea, so I, I don't know. Uh, you'll certainly be able to take what I learn and make this better uh, when you give it a try if it's something that you're interested in. So uh, we'll keep at it. All right, let's see if it holds. Alright, so this is what happened. That is not long enough to go through both plates of steel. So I have this large bit that I'm going to swap out. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill all four of these holes through this plate first. Come back and put this in and then drill through because this should be long enough to get through the, uh, the bottom plate at that angle. If not, it'll be so close I'll be able to see it and should be able to finish it off with a torch or some apparatus to uh, to make that bottom hole in the bottom plate. So uh, I'm going to do some switching around now and we'll get back at it in just a minute.
so I ran into an issue, and I'm going to have to try to figure this out. Actually, i got two issues. One is this drill bit cannot go this way. You can see this is up as far as it'll go. I've got a huge gap there, and I don't know how to close it yet or what I'm going to do. I may have to take this out. Uh, trying it in a hand drill in an existing hole, just uh, try, you know, because this bit is actually bigger than the hole that uh, was drilled, so you know how that goes. They never cut in easy, so that's a problem. Uh, that's actually two problems. One is this, this height and then that drill bit being a different size. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Uh, I'm going to have to think this thing through. I may have to just try to mark it and then uh, maybe take this plate off. And actually, if you look here, this might work. If you look here, no, that won't fit in between. I was going to say that that plate might fit there, which would give me the angle that I would need actually for that bolt to go in a little bit diagonally that way. But I think a better plan is to take get that marked so the holes are properly aligned, and then take the plates off prop this up at an angle or even mount it to the vise and see if that gives me enough room for that. Actually, if I, if I mark it and put it in an angle, I can put the other cutter head back on and just keep doing it that way, which is preferred. Um, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I don't think this is going to work out. Just can't get enough travel out of, the, out of this to get the the plate mounted and to get it high enough up to get the bill, uh, the drill bit and that, you know, uh, adapter head on there. So get the grinder out, cut that off, get over on the workbench and keep going. All right. So here's what I came up with. Uh, and this is going to help me get the angle. Not quite sure if it's going to be enough angle, but it's better than no angle. And two of the bolts are a little bit smaller than the other one. So if I drill the big holes first, and they work, I could put the smaller bolts through the bigger holes and get a little bit of play, which obviously you don't want, but I mean, I have a choice. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to tack weld this plate to that and this plate to that. And that way, when I turn the drill on, there's no movement. And then uh, I just have to clamp it on the other end so I can press down on it. And that should get me pretty darn close. <laughs> this one hour project is now turned into four. So uh, par for the course. So here we go. Okay, so on the first hole, what I learned was it does not like to cut in at an angle because it's only cutting on part of the, uh, the bit. So you've got to go super slow until it gets far enough in that the whole bit is in the metal and then you can kind of cut at regular pace. So if you're going to try this method, you don't have like a drill press, which would be ideal, then just note the uh, drill wants to hop. As soon as it makes contact, so you got to go really, really slow. There, you got to see what happens. It's a super, super slow process. Of course, having a drill press solves that problem, but I don't have one, so here we are. Get a little more support. That happened on uh, the other cuts, too. So I know if I just back up, get some lube in there. Once that bit is touching on all sides, then it'll cut as normal. As a side note, while I had the uh, angular drill out, I went ahead and put a hole in the side of my bucket. And the reason being, if you have an excavator, you probably know this, but when you scoop wet mud, that air that gets trapped in there has got to go somewhere, and oftentimes it'll shoot up towards the excavator. So I put a hole in this side and a hole in that side to allow the air to shoot out the sides when I'm digging ponds, and hopefully it'll keep the uh, excavator 
cleaner than it has in the past. All right, so what I was afraid was gonna happen happened, which is the angle of the steel here is not allowing the uh, bolt to come through. So I've got to find a way to trim that edge in order to be able to drive that bolt through. So I'm gonna uh, maybe look for a grinder that can do that. I don't have much to take off. It's about half the width of the, or maybe a quarter of the width of the steel, and then only, you know, about half the hole. So uh, I gotta figure out how to grind that out. Got these two smaller ones in, and if I had two more of this size, they would probably fit in here. But uh, I've got these bigger ones, which I really prefer to have two of the bigger ones in here. All right, so I tried grinding it, tried to drill bit, none of it worked, so I had to bring out the cutting torch. And, uh, basically enlarge the hole quite a bit on both this one and that one but uh, quite honestly once I cover it up with a washer everybody's gonna think I'm some kind of fabricator so uh, just waiting for it to cool off should be able to bolt it up and see what happens I'll be interested to see if this just doesn't slide off or if I can get it tight enough to squeeze it on there to uh, you know let it survive regular use it may not work I don't know so I'd like there to be something to catch the plate on uh, but there's nothing here and these angles just may not work so we'll see what happens all right so here's what it looks like now I've got to replace these you know I need to go back to these and just have four of these on there um, these don't appear to be long enough and I had to use the impact to tighten them up I just don't know if this is gonna last uh, if it won't just fall off after it starts getting used and gets loose being on a taper we know it wants to uh, creep down, so uh, you know it's been a fun project. We'll take it out and do a couple scoops and see how long it stays on. And uh, if it doesn't, then I'll have to rethink the design and see what else uh, might might be able to put in place. Something maybe some tabs or something, you know. And maybe actually I'll do that now. All right, so I went ahead and welded on a little couple little scraps here which is going to prevent this from trying to slide off, which I am highly concerned that it's going to do. The other thing I noticed, I gotta be careful using the, uh, uh, the thumb there. Uh, but, you know, hey, this is farm fabrication. I'm not trying to make money doing it, so it doesn't have to look good, it just gotta work. And then I welded the washers and these bolts. Skip these, because I'm gonna replace them. But I got these kind of welded in, so when I go to tighten at the top, I don't have to worry about holding the bottoms. And uh, we'll see, nice edge. We'll just have to see if the idea works. So let's go try it out. Okay, so I think from the video you can see that this ended up being a success, uh, certainly for $100. It is a lot less expensive than buying a separate bucket at a couple thousand dollars. Um, you know, the lessons learned are you learn my tools better and it would have saved me a couple hours of work and frustration, uh, but you know, that's the, way, that's the way it goes. You live and you learn and I think I'm better for it. So uh, hopefully this gave you some ideas and I'd save you guys a couple thousand bucks. If you like the content, just give me a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.